Hello everybody, it's January 27th. It's a cold winter's day up here in New Hampshire. Uh, my name's Troy Hall. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of uh, how I make my own wax foundations. That's right, beeswax foundations made from my own cappings wax. Um, yes, it is a uh, long forgotten way of how to, it's long and forgotten I should say in our, in our fast, quickly changing industry in beekeeping. Um, and there are some reasons why a lot of people don't use uh, or choose to go through this process to make their own foundations. And there are uh, a lot of reasons why I choose to uh, make my own foundation. I shouldn't say a lot of reasons, but the primary reason is that it's, uh, I find it to be fun, right? So I'm always thinking in my line of work, we're doing this full time. How can I keep my you know, work fun and enjoyable? Um, and rewarding and I find that both of those components are to be found enjoyability you know being enjoyable and um, finding rewarding making my own foundation um, it's a pretty easy process that doesn't require a lot of uh, tools I know everyone I've talked to over the years about why you know why aren't we making our foundation it makes perfect sense on a huge level if you got to make thousands tens of thousands of sheets of foundation it's just economically viable to uh, use you know wax already made or the plastic inserts or plastic frames altogether it makes perfect sense to give you guys an idea I run 300 colonies for honey production and we make up another 300 350 nucleus colonies so what I'm doing is a very small scale commercial I need anywhere this year we're making up a thousand sheets of foundation last year we made 3,000 sheets uh, we did I think we did 2,000 sheets of deep and we did a thousand uh, medium uh, sized foundations for our honey supers this year like I said I only need a thousand sheets so the amount of work to kind of consider what time frame what, how much time it takes we can do 300 to I'd say a little close to uh, what do you think Ray 300 sheets in a day yeah. So we're doing 300 sheets in a day, you know, just do the math. You got four days worth of, of work. That's, you know, not even a week's worth of work, just making a thousand sheets. And the way I'm doing this can be improved greatly. Uh, you can come up with ways to produce more in probably a similar fashion and be able to get production, you know, a well above maybe double to 600 sheets a day by just doing some things a little bit differently. If you have equipment that can hold larger tanks of, you know, volumes of wax and maybe have, uh, you know, a, two embossing machines or something you could double production so but the the idea of why I do this is that it's just it's kind of fun and exciting to reincorporate my own wax back into the apiary um, with foundation and uh, I always like to think I, I, I humor myself sometimes that if the power went out in the world you know fell apart I could always make my own foundation uh, as long as I had power <laughs> or maybe I could cook up you know they have a big fire over the drum of wax or something I could I could at least be you know, when the world's falling apart I can still make my own beeswax foundations so um, it's just nice to know that plus the expense right time is money so I'm not you know my time I always figure is not really worth much but when I'm making my own foundations there is some expense that is shaved off my you know expenses as a business uh, again because what else am I going to do this time of year and if I had some other things to do yes I would probably this would be something that would be pushed off and I would have to just buy you know the, the plastic I it, typically I've always bought about wax foundations in the past but the plastic inserts are so easy so again I'm almost talking myself out of anyone doing this but I encourage anyone uh, to to embark on this if you have the desire to do it and hopefully with today's video I'll give you a brief overview of how easy and simple it is and why you why you should give it a try all right, so pretty much making foundation, you need beeswax. Uh, we produce our own, obviously, with honey. The byproduct of honey uh, is uh, beeswax. So we use uh, our own cappings wax, which is kind of fun. But we melt the cappings into uh, big, well, not big. We melt them into the, just we, we, we use the wax melter, and then we, we take the liquid wax and just dump it into five-gallon buckets. A block of wax in a five-gallon bucket, solidified and weighed out, is anywhere from 30 30, 34 pounds of wax and uh, we take those blocks I use just some grain bags uh, and we take the big blocks of wax and just take a sledgehammer out in the other room break up the blocks of wax into more usable pieces sizes if you will just some, some chunks like this and we, we, the idea is to have a continuous kind of supply of liquid wax ahead of you know your ability to make these blank sheets of of wax that you're going to roll through the embossing machine i just have an old maxent uh, wax melter that we 
um, use kind of in a, a we do obviously you fill up the water in the wax melter to the bottom valve like you're just going to use it to melt cappings but we, instead of instead of melting cappings you're just re, re liquefying the wax so we uh, we we fill up the I don't want to get over complicated but I try to keep enough wax in here where we're not too where we're going to use the amount of we're going to use this wax for for the day like I put the amount of wax in here that's going to be supplied for the day's uh, amount of uh, making foundation so this first uh, the top rib in this tank uh, we try not to get too far above it my my idea though behind all this is at the end of the day you don't have to drain all the wax out of this thing it's uh, if you have a big wax cake that solidifies in this overnight and you turn it on the next morning and it kind of forms a seal sometimes on the top and if you do this it, being that there's water below it and you want to reliquify it you have this pressure that builds up and you can have this explosive <laughs> kind of thing happen uh, with a lot of solidified wax in the top layer of this so my uh, logic is to drain this at the end of the day down to just a thin sheet of wax so that you can heat the water up and incorporate a fresh batch of wax every day but essentially one thing to think about um, I pretty much need to be setting this up or turning everything on about two hours in advance before we begin uh, to get all the wax, wax in this tank liquid, the wax in the, uh, the trays over there liquid. Um, ideal temperature for all of this is about 165 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit for the wax temperature. If you can maintain that, that's a nice temperature where everything kind of just solidifies nicely on the paddles and it, uh, it kind of adheres enough to the paddle where you have these nice sheets that are just the right thickness to, for me to roll through the embossing machine. Okay, so giving you guys a, a brief demo what, what the uh, equipment's needed here for making these blank sheets of wax to roll into foundations. Essentially what I have are just two steam tables, very uh, reasonably uh, they're very economical. I think I paid a little over $200 or $100 a piece for them. Um, the uh, stainless um, tubs that are going in the steam table, I think they're eight and a half by 11, which is a pretty, I guess, standard dimension in the restaurant industry for steam tables. But it's a perfect size for um, making these wax sheets. And uh, the, besides the steam tables, uh, a paddle is really all you're gonna need. Paddle's just made out of some plywood. Um, and obviously just screwed a little handle onto the back. So it's a very easy thing to make. Uh, you don't need to go out and buy anything or, you know, come up with so many, you know, <laughs> any, any uh, it's any, essentially it's very easy. You don't need to do too much uh, to come up with the basic tools needed to just to, to make these sheets. Uh, temperature of the wax is crucial. Um, I like to have the temperature in this, uh, when you're to dip the paddle into ideally 165 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, um, is the, I find to be a, a really nice temperature where just the right amount of wax is adhering to the paddle. We do two, two uh, passes with the paddle over the wax. So you have two, you know, if you're dipping candles, you're just, you know, it's essentially every, every pass uh, with the paddle submerged in the wax, you're adding a layer of wax. So we're doing two passes on the paddle. Uh, to get our sheets made up and what I have for a thermostat is just a basic I don't know what they call these things you can get them at any store or buy them online uh, just something that you use you know a, a meat pro or a probe thermometer that you can stick in cuts of meat or anything that you want to throw in an oven you know it's got six feet or four or five feet of, of wire hooked into the the magnetic uh, reader here. So I just have it stuck to the side of the steam table. And again, it's just telling me, you know, keeping an eye on the temperature. Uh, being that these thermostats on these steam tables aren't exactly, uh, they're not exact by any means. It's like low, medium, and high, right? So what's that mean in regards to temperature? So giving you guys like a brief little demo here. Um, the water temperature, the water is kind of like hot tub temperature. So what's that? 100 and 100 degrees I think is, is good. You want, you want to maintain these sheets to be pliable as they go through the embosser. So just keeping them in a vat of, of water to keep them uh, warm so that they uh, emboss nicely. 
and I uh, incorporate a little bit of Dawn dish soap into this and I'll explain a little bit why as we get to the embossing side of it but the soap kind of does twofold I think it helps keep the wax from sticking to the rollers um, and I do something to the embossing which again I'll explain in a minute but it it does help uh, finish to finish the foundation nicely um, not too much soap a little Dawn goes a long way so just like maybe a just like a, a dab or whatever I think there's probably like three two and a half gallons of water in this and I barely use I think a half a teaspoon of soap or something. So the paddle is wet. That's crucial. Without a wet paddle, I'll demonstrate if you guys are familiar with water and wax. Wax is lighter than water. So if you submerge like my finger and you just dip it, you know, if I stick that in the liquid wax, the wax comes right off your finger, right? That's the old fashioned way actually they used to make queen cups is by taking, you know, these little just dip, doing the same thing, but with using wax on little cups to use for uh, making cell cups for grafting queen larvae, or larvae for raising queens. So um, the, the temperature of the water is again around 100 degrees. Wet the paddle so that the wax does not stick to your paddle and ruin the paddle. So uh, just again, kind of explaining it for people who have no concept of doing this. So the paddle's wet and uh, obviously get the bubbles off the paddle. You want a nice smooth surface. Um, and then what I do is gently kind of start from one end of the paddle and lay it into the wax from like top to bottom and then pull up the paddle, let a little bit of the wax drip off, kind of turn it right up like a tabletop and let that wax solidify. Then I dunk it again, same fashion, but this time I'm going to pick it up on the uh, reverse, in the reverse direction. So I can have the wax drip off on the other side. And what I'm trying to do is form a nice even layer uh, of wax across the paddle so that when it goes through the embossing machine it's a nice consistent thickness of wax that doesn't uh, cause any sort of you know when you run it through the embossing machine if there's an imbalance of thickness if the thickness is inconsistent the wax will start to curve you don't want you don't want it to curve too much you want nice straight pieces of foundation so that you can cut them to the finished dimension and have really easy cleanup. So the, I'll do it one more time, paddles dipped. This time I'll just kind of do it normally, kind of in the same fashion that we would, you know, if I'm not shooting a video. Sometimes you get these little air bubbles. So often you can kind of work with them or they'll pass through the embossing machine without too much issue. If there's too big, if you get a lot of holes or air bubbles, obviously you gotta cull those. Dunk the paddle. And voila, I mean, as you can see, it comes off the paddle really nicely. So it, it, uh, it, if you do this, uh, if you figure out how to do it like I have been able to, the work is really easily done. And just to give you guys an idea for like any of the, as you can see in, the, in here, you have these little pieces of wax that stick to the side of the paddle. I got a bucket down here full of scraps and the scraps we just recycle back into the tank of liquid wax. I mean, that's pretty much just to give you guys an idea for what we do, everything is extremely recyclable with beeswax. So we just cycle, we'll just dump this in here in a little bit. And anything on the finished side, when we're trimming up the foundations, all that gets dumped back in. So here we are at the uh, embossing, or the rolling embossing uh, portion of making wax foundation. Uh, this is a machine, or this embossing, uh, these rollers I bought from an acquaintance of mine in Missouri. I haven't asked him about his name being disclosed on the internet, so I'll keep his name anonymous for now, but he made these for me. Uh, he's made them for a few other folks, friends of mine, who's, who have been, uh, I guess, fanatics in their beekeeping endeavors to go to the extent of making their own foundations. Um, so the rollers themselves are made out of plastic. There, there's different, you know, some of them are made out of aluminum. There's some sort of metal, aluminum, brass, the old fashioned ones. But this is, these are just, a, it's obviously aluminum with a plastic roller. And then I actually take garbage bags. And this is a, this is a secret. This, what is, this will alleviate a lot of headaches. Um, and I know uh, a, a lot of my, a friend of mine who does this, who has come up with a lot of, he you know, has a system where water is constantly being poured or dripped over these rollers without any uh, plastic to keep the wax from adhering to the rollers. Some people will uh, lubricate the rollers with like a paintbrush with some soap on them. But I find with garbage bags cut to the width and obviously long enough to, en en to envelop 
out the rollers about one and a half twice, you know, one and a half or two times is sufficient. But essentially what it, the plastic is doing is just going to keep your sheets of wax from sticking to the rollers and it comes out the other end very nicely. So you have these blank sheets of wax that we just made. And obviously I want to get off all the little tidbits that are floating in the water, but it's very easy. It's, I mean, it's just as easy as wringing out the old laundry back in the day, just like grandma used to do. And you come through on this end. This is a pretty, this, this sheet will get cold because it's got some holes in it. But, you know, just to give you guys an idea how easy this is. So there's that. See the holes? The air bubbles that came through. So that gets recycled. See if we can get a nice piece for demonstration purposes. This one looks really, really picture perfect here. So, I don't know. I always keep thinking to myself, this is just a nice thing to do in the winter to be making these sheets of foundation. You can think a lot about what you want to try to accomplish for the season with bees. And uh, you're working with a product that, you know, was made in the, in the summer of last, you know, the, the warm seasons of last year. So you're kind of working with things that are made and with, you know, the bees being productive on of trying, you know, making honey. Anyway, this, this, you can kind of get lost in the thought. I'm not even going to bother. Well, I guess for demonstration purpose, see the tear in that one? Sometimes the rollers will press the tear together and you can come out the other end unscathed and having, but this, this I'm going to recycle again. I mean, it did do a decent job. You can see that there's just a little tear there. So sometimes you can kind of take a mess and make it usable here. Let's see if I can do another sheet. These are getting a little thinner. My wax is a little hot, so it's, I had to cool it down. So this is a thinner sheet than I, that I would, than, uh, than I would have liked for it to be. But I try to just have a nice even speed of rolling it through so that you can kind of get a nice consistent uh, embossing of, of, the, of the sheets of wax. But that's as simple as it is. So we're finishing up the wax foundations here, cutting them to the finished dimensions uh, so they fit in the frames nicely. Um, this is something I encourage a lot of people to, um, to come up with ideas to do this. This is just an archaic, pretty much primitive way of doing this. Um, I've got a, I got it. This is probably the point of the production of, of producing wax where I can uh, it, try to come up with something that's just like a, uh, a little bit different in regards to stamping these foundations out or even the, the, the paddle that I'm using to kind of slim down the dimensions of the paddle so that I don't have to cut off so much excess and that this, this step can be reduced drastically. Instead of making four cuts, I can just make two and cuts down this time by 50%. Um, but regardless, the paddle that I have is obviously oversized, so we need to cut the excess uh, wax off. I just have a piece of plywood cut to the uh, finished dimensions of the foundation using a utility knife to cut the score of the wax right on the edges. Very easy to do. Very brainless. I like to say most beekeeping work is so repetitive and brainless, you just kind of just go, for, go through with it. But uh, that's it. I mean, when, and then you have these, I mean, you can see that this is the finished product here. It's not pretty, but that's a nice pretty one where the, you know, the lines are pretty. And uh, there's a little bit of debris that the bees don't mind. They'll draw out the comb just as fine, uh, as, as, as good as anything. Um, and I always like to say that the plastic sheets of foundation just don't, come close to 100% wax. Obviously there's durability and the wax is more fragile, but I think in the end, the you know, bees just, the wax, wooden wax or just something about it. Um, call me crazy, but uh, I can't kind of get away from it. Not that I don't use plastic foundations in, in my apiary I have in the past when I get into a pinch, but if I can use this and utilize my time to do this, I encourage anybody else out there who's crazy enough and a fanatic enough to, uh, to, to make their own foundations to do it. So here's the finished product. Um, you have a frame. Uh, traditionally, I've always done two cross wires, uh, horizontal wires uh, in the, on the middle portion of the frame. And I've actually been thinking about doing uh, one more wire at the bottom, mainly due to the fact that a small percentage of these will sag slightly. Um, and you'll have a little bit of a bow in the foundation if the bees don't draw this out within a few weeks after we put it on them. So um, 
but traditionally we've the, with just two cross wires and I'll explain this wooden shim here in a second but with just this setup the bees draw a beautiful comb and there's hardly any imperfection um, in a sense any 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 more any less than like obviously with wax foundation sometimes without a, an intense flow the bees will chew out the sides of the combs a little bit um, but that's just kind of a given with wax foundations. If you've got a good honey flow or a good nectar flow, the bees draw these out beautifully. Um, the wooden shim here is used for uh, uh, horizontal or vertical support. Uh, I, wax does sag. So um, it, I don't know if you necessarily need it. I've always put one in because I've read a lot of literature and uh, a few friends of mine who have done this before me have always referenced that this is a good good thing to consider for uh, support just to keep your the, 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 wet, the combs from sagging. It's just an eighth of an inch square piece of pine that I uh, make up a bunch of these and then dip them in the same uh, steam table of wax when we're done and we're assembling all the frames, putting the wax, the foundations in the frames. We'll just take these shims and use some pliers, pull them out of the vat of liquid wax and press them onto the foundations and then that wax obviously solidifies and seats itself right onto the onto the foundation. So as you can see, yes, it's a little labor intensive when it comes to the assembling of the frames, putting the foundations in. It's not just popping plastic foundations in, which is uh, you know obviously saves a huge amount of time. And I understand why a lot of why it's why it's pursued by most people. But my point, I guess, I'm trying to make to you guys is if you have the time. The desire um, and just a little bit of uh, maybe wanting to experience the old-fashioned way of of making foundation uh, I strongly encourage this it's I, I've always have had the last several years of doing this found it to be very fun and there's nothing like looking at a, a nice drawn-out comb of, uh, of found you know comb that the bees have drawn out with on homemade foundation there's something really rewarding about that as a beekeeper